one, did you notice that I was playing the same pattern again and again for two to three times on the tabla just now? Do you want to know more about what these patterns actually are? That is exactly what we are going to be doing today. Welcome to the second episode on the rhythmic basics of Indian classical music with me, Lakshmana. In the previous episode, we looked at the concept of musical tempo or speed and how this affects the pace of the music that we hear. Today, we are going to be looking at what gives music the structure that all of us enjoy so much and what is it that makes certain parts of music more stronger than others. As discussed in the previous episode, rhythm in Indian classical music has two aspects to it, thala and laya. We have explored the concept of laya much in detail in the previous episode. Laya is essentially the speed of music. Have you ever noticed that in any kind of music that there is a pattern that gives music a particular structure? Thala is essentially a repetitive cycle of a fixed number of beats. It is a collection of rhythmic pulses that travels in a cycle in a fixed speed known as the laya. Thala reflects the cyclical philosophy of rhythm as used in Indian classical music. A full thala cycle is complete when one performer starts at the first beat of the thala cycle, travels through the entire thala cycle in a fixed tempo or fixed speed before returning back to again to the first speed or one. This is the key difference between rhythm in Indian classical music and rhythm in Western music. In Western music, you have a time signature such as 4 over 4. This tells us that there are four quarter note beats in one musical measure or one musical section. A Western musician would therefore count this 4 4 rhythm like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 2, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. As you can hear here, the rhythm here is grouped into four beats each, and a collection of such four groups of four beats make up an entire song. The rhythmic beats here travel in a straightforward and linear line with no point of re return. You have one group of four, and then comes the next group of four, and then comes the next group of four, and so on. Rhythm here is essentially based on the concept of addition. In Indian classical music, rhythm is seen as a time cycle, just as how we look for the second hand of a clock to complete a full rotation from one number back to the same number, to tell if one full minute has passed by, one full thala cycle is complete when you start at the first beat of the thala cycle, run through the prescribed number of beats in the thala cycle and return back to beat number one. The first thala cycle beat. then begins once you return to the first beat. This cyclical repetition then keeps recurring throughout a piece in Indian classical music. Thal cycles in Indian classical music are greatly varied in metric length or the number of beats that they may contain. While there are a handful of popular thals used in Indian classical music, I shall use the common thal of Thin Thal as a demonstration in this video. Thin Thal is a metric cycle that consists of 16 beats. The teka or the basic framework of Thin Thal goes like this. Da, din, din, da, da, din. Tin, da, na, tin, tin, ta, ta, din, din, da, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, one. This would sound something like this when played on the tabla. would sound like on the tabla. We began on the first beat or beat number one which was da and then we played through the entire tintal cycle which was 16 beats in length and then returned back to the same first beat da before ending. This is essentially what tal is. 
in Indian classical music. Did you notice that within the each tala cycle, the beats are actually structured into four parts with each part having four beats? Okay, I will play the tin tal again and see if you can catch this. distinct sections of four beats each within the same within the full 16 beat cycle now let me demonstrate this verbally da din din da da din din da na tin tin ta ta din din da 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15, 16, 1. Did you notice that there were added significance to selected beats within the Tal cycles? Did you notice that beat number 1, 5, 9 and 13 had an added significance compared to the other beats in the Tala cycle? These are the exact places where the new sections within the Tala cycles begin. Team Tal has four sections of four beats each and therefore you will have new sections beginning on beat number 1 and then on beat number 5, and then on beat number 9, and then the last section of the Tal will begin on beat number 13. There are numerous other Tals in Indian classical music, and their metric length can consist of a wide variety. We have a 7-beat Tala cycle known as Rupak Tal, and this would sound something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, tin, tin, na, din, na, din, na. We also have a 10-beat Tala cycle known as Jab Tal, which is sounding like this. D, Na, D, D, Na, T, Na, D, D, Na. Essentially, Tal is a framework of metric time measurement in Indian classical music. Talas follow a cyclical pattern and they have a fixed number of beats. The Tala cycles start on beat number 1, travel through the prescribed number of beats in a cyclical fashion, in a fixed tempo before returning back to first beat or beat number one. This repetitive cycle then keeps recurring throughout. I hope that through this episode you have been able to get a basic understanding of the cyclical philosophy of rhythm that is used in Indian classical music. In the next episode we shall be looking at how thalas are actually used in the performance and practice of Indian classical music. We hope that you have enjoyed this episode and we hope to see you soon. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.